Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to this special edition of the Inside Strategic Coach Podcast. Today, you're going to hear an interview with Dan Sullivan and Ari Mizell. Ari is a Strategic Coach client and a fabulous business consultant from Brooklyn, New York. If you're not familiar with Strategic Coach yet, you might have some questions about some of the topics and resources that they discuss and how you can take advantage of the offer. Don't worry, stick around to the end and I'll give you all the details. Hi, this is Dan Sullivan at the podcast Inside Strategic Coach. And today I have a great friend and a great collaborator, Ari Mizell from New York City, Brooklyn, where he lives. And Ari has turned out to be one of the most extraordinarily useful collaborators that we've had in Coach since we started the company in 1989. And the reason is that so many of the strategic coach clients will have the ambitions that run them into a wall. And the wall is they don't actually have the capability inside their own organization to actually carry out their vision of what could be bigger and better. And for years, you know, we've tried to help them to think it through and then to look for so-and-so out in their marketplace, which is very, very difficult when you don't know where they live and what's available. But what Ari has created from our perspective is that he's created the go-to number, the go-to email address where anybody who has something that they want to achieve with a special kind of capability, you can just contact Ari and his organization and they will source the person, they will connect you with that person and they will manage the process of the project that you're working with. Did I do a good job, Ari? Yeah, that's pretty good. Although I have to say at this point, we have about seven people on our team in-house that pretty much cover all the expertise that we usually need. So we don't have to look very far now. Oh, good. Good. So everybody likes a history, especially entrepreneurial history. Entrepreneurs love to hear how entrepreneurs got where they were. So just very, very quickly, three or four minutes, where you started, what gave you the idea for what you're doing right now, and how have you grown? Great. Absolutely. So when I got out of college, which was about 15 years ago, I went to work in upstate New York in Binghamton, New York, doing a big construction project, a big real estate project. I was developing these old buildings and I had gone to an Ivy League school and majored in real estate. And not surprisingly, that doesn't teach you how to build a building. So the deal was that anybody that worked on the job had to teach me their trade. And I spent the next three years learning and doing every construction trade imaginable, as well as running the project and all the legal aspects, the zoning, the politics, everything. And it was a real crash course in managing a project, time management, and also leading a team. And it was a particularly big challenge for me because I was 20 years old and you had you know third generation bricklayers who were 50 years old that didn't want to listen to me. So it was very formative. It was the hardest work I've ever done in my life. And when I was 23, I found myself in $3 million of personal debt and was diagnosed with Crohn's disease because I'd been treating my body like an amusement park rather than a temple. So after having worked real hard for three years, I basically found myself in a situation where I was so sick and weak that I could barely do an hour of work a day. And the pressure cooker response to that was to create a brand new system of productivity, which I called less doing. And the idea was, I kept asking myself, what would you do if you can only work an hour a day? You have to say no to a lot of things. You have to change how you do things. And it, it really is, in my opinion, it's very much 10x thinking because it's not, you know, if I could save an hour a day, what would I do? This is what if I only had an hour a day? Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different way of getting things done. So that grew into a whole methodology. I've written several books and teaching and consulting around the world. And now the focus is on coaching and on business consulting. So we really take people from, you know, making $40,000 a year up to $10 million a year. Ari, just to satisfy the need of our listeners on this, because I don't want them phoning me, I want them phoning you. <laughs> <laughs> Periodically, we'll stop every five minutes or so and just give the contact information, because this is going to be one of the single most important contacts that all of our strategic coach clients from you know, the first of the signature level right to the top of 10 times and also going into the Game Changer program now. This is going to be a crucial resource for you. Well, thank you very much. So yeah, the hotline, I guess, is 
the email address people can send this to is OAO at lessdoing.com. And that stands for Optimize, Automate, Outsource. So OAO at Less Doing is the one where you can send it and say, you know, I heard from Dan, I'm in strategic coach, and this is the project. And we'll have a conversation. Or you can just go to lessdoing.com and find out everything that we do. Now, having said that, Ari won't respond to you if your request doesn't come in a particular form. So for strategic coach clients, if you want to access less doing, OAO less doing, your response to get something started will require an impact filter, which is the go-to tool that I recommend for all entrepreneurs to make sure that they're giving the vision to the project, but they're not doing the project. Absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that up because... I'll tell you that if you're listening to this and you've ever had an, a bad experience outsourcing, I'm sorry to tell you that nine out of 10 times, it's probably your fault because you did not correctly convey the vision of what you were trying to accomplish because we're entrepreneurs, right? And we have ideas in our head and we tend to assume that people kind of get it and that we're being clear about what we want, but it's not necessarily a skill set that we have to be able to convey that. Delegation is a skill. The impact filter is such a beautiful polarizer to sort of get in onto paper what success looks like, which is a really important thing that I know that you talk about, but I think a lot of people don't really, that doesn't hit home as much, is that I can tell you what I want, but my vision of success is one thing. And if you don't know what it is, it's going to be very hard for you to hit the mark. And even if you produce the result, if it doesn't look the way that I wanted it to look, I'm probably not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I can say that the number one thing that people do is a mistake when they look at out the outsource or to delegate internally is they come to the provider with a solution rather than a problem. And I think that the impact filter really helps you to suss out the problem and then what success looks like. Yeah. We're in the midst as we're doing this podcast of a project that Ari and I are doing together. And that is that I asked for 10 volunteers from the 10 Times program who had a project that was really, really exciting to them. But they recognized right off the bat that they don't have one, they don't have the resources and capabilities available to them. And that absolutely, they're not the person to actually do the how on the project. And what the volunteers had to volunteer for was that they would agree that when they're interacting with less doing with Aries network of capabilities, that their only role throughout the project to completion was to provide the first impact filter and then the next stage impact filter. And all they're doing is giving the purpose, the importance, the ideal outcome, best and worst result and success criteria for each stage of completion. And all the work would be done from the less doing network of capabilities. Could you just give a report? I think we're about a month into this now, maybe a little bit more since we did this. And we had 10. I don't know if 10 have shown up, but I know five have. Yeah. So it's actually been really fascinating. And to your credit, this is your idea to try this. And I've known about the impact filter for you know almost two years now, and I've never tried doing this with clients. It worked extremely well. because So first of all, as you, I think, saw of the 10 people, several people responded with an email saying, I want to do this and this and this. Some people wrote very, very long ones. Some people wrote very short ones. And I, of course, had to respond and say, as per instructions, you'll have to send this to me in an impact filter. But the thing is, even that alone is very fascinating to me because you told them in person, <laughs> you have to fill out an impact filter. And yet... Well, not only that, but I did it in an impact filter. Right. Which, exactly. <laughs> even that is amazing, right? Because then there's still were people responding and you know giving their version of it. It's like, no, no, it's got to be this way because we're going to be on the same page. Yeah. So I think we got about half of them that got them right away. Some of them took a little longer. I believe we got all of them. And the interesting thing too was that some people had very small, in my mind, some small projects that they wanted to get done, which is valid. But there were some really groundbreaking, like game changing, honestly, projects that we got from that. So we actually just completed the first one this past week where we were working with a mortgage company to, if I can say it, I think we're going to revolutionize some aspects of the mortgage industry. And it was a really big undertaking. Um, and it went really well. And I had him fill out one in the beginning and I also had him fill out another impact filter like two days before we got there. And he even said to me, he's like, I'm not good at these. I don't like doing them. And there were two things that he wrote under success criteria that were like the focus of the entire two days that we were with them. And the fact that he did that really made that 
helpful. Yeah. So we were able to get on the same page, stay on the same page, and then produce the result that we were both trying to get to. So it's going really, really well. And it's something that I think we, we honestly want to do with every consulting project that we do going forward. Yeah. And the thing about it is that so often that I've seen with delegation, you use the word, they don't really provide what makes it look successful at the end. What I find is that there's two parts to a successful delegation. There's the what, and most people are kind of okay about saying the what they want, but it's like supplying somebody with a new possession that should be electrified and they don't supply the power to it. Because the real power to a project is actually the why in the entrepreneur's mind. Why this is so important to me. Why this will change things for me. And if you don't explain that to whoever is going to carry out, whether it's internal support or outside support, outside capability, they can't prioritize the importance. And what people are looking for is real emotional impact. This guy really wants this. And, you know, my boss, she gave me this, but I don't know why she wants it. So it's hard for me to prioritize. I'm already doing a lot of things, and I can't figure out where in the line that this one belongs. Does it go right to the front of the line, or is it halfway back? And I think that's the biggest thing, and that team members and people who are consultants who solve problems for people, they're human, and they got to start every day to create a sense of priority about what they're going. And if it's just what, 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 the person who comes along with a why is going to go right to the front of the line. Right, absolutely. And, and then the other thing is that a lot of times those employees may actually be afraid to even push back and ask those questions because they think that they're supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about it is that I believe in the saying that the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in war. <laughs> so it's important for people to take that time up front to foresee events that are really not that surprising. When you look at it, and somebody has to come back to you and say, well, I need to know how I'm going to pay for this or something. It's like, those are not questions that you can't anticipate. Mm -hmm. And if you put those into a proper form to begin with, you're really going to help yourself. So there's six levels of delegation, uh, generally speaking. And the sixth level is just get it done, which is the hardest one to accomplish because people have trust issues. You need good people to do it. But if you do an impact filter, that becomes a lot easier because then they should, in theory, have all the tools and resources they need to get it done. So, Ari, I'm going to ask you to put another hat on. And, you know, we're talking to you as a provider of what I think is a fundamentally crucial capability and resource in the marketplace for every strategic coach client. I can't think of one that I've ever coached where they didn't hit a wall somewhere where they were lacking a capability and may have been blocked or stopped for up to years at a time just because they were thinking in terms, how am I going to do this? Who's going to do this for me? But they didn't have the talent available to them. But the other hat I would like to put is that you're a strategic coach client. You're in the 10 Times program. We're basically taking part, you and I right now, in a game-changing project with the 10 volunteers who are completing their projects just through communication with you in a certain mode. So in terms of your entrepreneurial vision for yourself, where do you see yourself growing now? Because you've gone through a stage with a partnership and then you moved on beyond the partnership and now are much more focused on what you really love doing. So what what do you see doing? And the second question to that was, where would the impact filter fit in with your growth as you go forward? Sure. Yeah, great. So even though I started less doing about seven years ago, I took this sort of two-year hiatus to work on this other company, which I left about four and a half months ago or so. So I, basically four months ago, I kind of started over from zero with less doing. And I'm happy to report that things are going extremely well and we've gotten up to a level that I'm happy with and we're meeting our goals, which is great. So for me, what we do now if I were to sort of generalize it, I'd say that we work with entrepreneurs who have opportunity in excess of what their infrastructure will support to create systems and processes that empower teams to make themselves more replaceable. 
so that eventually they can optimize automated outsource everything that they do. And that making them replaceable is the most fascinating one to me because it really speaks to unique ability. And to me, it's the opposite in some senses. The unique ability is there. I want to shed away all the other stuff that is not unique ability, and that's the replaceability aspect. So when you have a Fortune 500 CEO that insists on booking his own travel or her own travel, and we see that because they think they're the only ones who know how to do it, it's really common. Then it's like, well, okay, well, then you're limiting what you can actually do with your time. So I want to grow to the point where we are the go-to resource for entrepreneurs in that situation who are trying to grow with the current resources they have or even less resources because I think that we provide really innovative solutions. As you said, we're sort of a go-to for this. And the more complex, the better, in my opinion, because they're more fun to figure out. And the way that the impact filter works for me is that I'm now at a point which honestly is quite a bit modeled after how I've seen you act with your team, where they can say no to me and they can veto me. And they should because in some ways they know more about what's going on in the business than I do. So if I'm going to communicate something to them that is a big project that I think is going to be a big shift or something or a direction change, I'm going to want to do it in a form that is consistent so that my 17 crazy ideas that I have in a day, rather than just blabbing them out, all, all out at them, yeah. requires me to take a few minutes and actually think through it. Mm-hmm. And then they can decide. Yeah. I put in some self-restrictions, mm-hmm. you know, and one of the self-restriction is that ideas come very naturally to me and they come often and they come continually. And in the past, I've caused a lot of problem by speaking these out loud within the hearing of people who already had a full plate of other projects that they were doing for me. And as a result of that, Kathy Colby says one of the most dangerous things that you can do in your entrepreneurial company is brainstorm in the presence of someone who has a long follow-through in their Colby, okay? Because they don't understand brainstorming. What they understand is the person I'm most responsible to just gave three more things that have to go on my to-do list. And one of the things about the follow-through profile in the Colby is that they can't go to bed at night until their list is finished for that day. Right. And the reason is because they have a full list already compiled for tomorrow, and you put them into severe pressure. So what I said to myself is that I'm going to censor myself, and I'm going to, first of all, before I send an impact filter to anyone else to actually implement, I'm going to do an impact filter on the idea that I'm exploring, And I'm good enough, and you've seen a sample of my impact filters. I'm really Mm -hmm. quite specific with my impact filters. And I tell very hairy stories between best result and worst result. I mean, I actually scare myself. And what I've done is that I can look at the files. In the last three years, I've done slightly over 1,000 impact filters. So it's a little bit less than one a day over a three-year period, but only 300 out of that 1,000 have actually been sent on to anyone. The other 700 is where, without bothering anyone else or confusing anyone else, I just thought through it and I said, it's a really good idea, but not now. It's a really good idea, but it's part of something else. Or it's, I'm glad I thought this through so I didn't confuse somebody by talking about it. But the ones who go through, when they get an impact filter from me, they know it's 100% that I'm totally committed, but I'm totally open to being negotiated on it. In other words, they can come back to me and say, okay, you got to make a decision here. I've already doing four things for you. Where does this one fit in? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have room for five. We have room for four. So is there one that's going to get parked for a month or a quarter? while we can do this and everything. And what it does is it really introduces creative teamwork. Yeah, right. Yeah, it just becomes collaborative, creative teamwork with people. Because like you, I say, look, I have a two fact finder, okay? And if the task requires some really, really good research, what am I going to tell a seven fact finder about facts? Right, I'm a three. And I'm a two follow through. And what am I as a two follow through going to tell us eight follow through about how to actually get something done? It's like a rice farmer in the Himalayan Valley telling a Sherpa how to get to the top of Mount Everest. Right, yeah, right, exactly. So I'm a four follow through, so... 
I wouldn't know what to do with that much follow through. <laughs> okay, so you have lifestyle goals. I know you're really, really big on the wraparound of taking your children to school and picking them up at the end of the day. And that's a central value in your life, your relationship, you know, your mar- marriage relationship and everything like that. But how far can you go the way it's working right now? How far can less doing do? <laughs> how much can less doing do as we go forward? For instance, could you take on my entire 2,500 clients? Take them on to do what? Projects. Oh, all the them. Yeah. I would say that that would probably slow us down a little bit, but yeah, I think so. Because, you know, yeah. what we do is a framework. I've created a methodology. It's not just Ari's brain and your project. It's an absolute methodology. I've already had two of my team members do consultations that I would have thought only I could do, and they did them completely on their own. Everything we do is making it so that nobody on the team, particularly me, becomes a bottleneck. So yeah, absolutely. I think that the sky is the limit for what we're doing. We're obsessive about documentation and recording. I mean, we just did this entire two-day consultation and we recorded the entire thing in audio and video so we can actually create training material out of it and give a sense of what the final product looks like in it. So Mm. everything I'm doing is to ideally not expand the team of seven right now. That's the core team. But once we get to a, I'd say in the next quarter or the one after that, I would say that those seven people will then be able to have teams under them. So we'll have leadership teams of teams. Yeah. Ideally. These teams are really digital teams. They're all, They're virtual yes, all, teams, all over they? the world. Yeah. Everything is virtual. So they could be anywhere in the world in any time zone. I don't know how far afield you go, but theoretically, they could be halfway around the world. Yeah. I mean, I've managed a team that was in 17 time zones before. Right now, we are in North America. So that yeah. works. And yeah. the other thing that I try to do as much as possible is make our communication as asynchronous as possible, right? So yeah. I'm able to use a tool called Foxer that makes it so I can have one-on-one voice conversations with any number of coaching clients, but I don't have to schedule phone calls around it. So I can do it when it's best for them and doesn't interfere with what they're doing. And then I can respond when it's best for me. And we're able to do more and more of that stuff. We're even, most people who do any marketing are familiar with the tools that allow you to send a voicemail message directly to somebody's phone without it ringing. We have it set up with like six or seven of those that I've recorded that anyone on the team can send to a client when they want. And it's like, hey, it's Ari, I just want to follow up and see if you have any questions. And it's real and they can call back. But the team can initiate those voicemail messages on my behalf. I had the pleasure of watching your presentation at Genius Network last November. I was sitting there and I said, well, that's trick number five. <laughs> that's trick number seven. That's trick number 10. I think you're, uh, you've got uh, you know, almost like an infinite supply of time-saving tricks for the entrepreneurs. And tell me, to what extent do you also make them more capable by going through one of your projects with you. Because that was my real reason for setting up the 10-person volunteer project that we did, is that I wanted to show them that all they have to do and become extraordinarily skillful at is doing really good impact builders because the who they need to ever carry it out is available. And we have a conduit with you because you can actually educate them on how to make best use of outside resources and outside capabilities. Well, I mean, put it this way, right? With this last consultation last week, you know, again, it was two full days. But at the end of the two full days, we had a seven foot whiteboard that was mapped out with their whole process that we'd created and a whole list of tools. But I'm still able to go back to the initial impact filter and say, does it look like this? Yeah. You know? you know, without breaking confidentiality here, just to give our listeners in Strategic Coach a handle on sort of typical projects, one that entrepreneurs, if they were running their own business, would probably not have the capability to do, but you have it readily available for them. So three different kinds of projects that you would complete, maybe just very recent ones off the mm-hmm. top. Well, I can tell you one that's really common that we've been seeing. I see this more and more, and it's what I would refer to, I mean, a lot of people would refer to it as the customer journey. So what it looks like when somebody goes from being a lead to being a client to hopefully being a raving fan. And a lot of that has to do with CRMs and email follow. It kind of ties in a whole bunch of different things, text messaging, Facebook messages, Facebook ads, and then touch points once they are clients. You know, Do they get a gift every so often? Do they get a postcard? 
all of these things, and they can all be automated, and you can look at it in terms of like an energy wave of when they receive different kinds of points. It doesn't matter if you're in the banking industry or in coach, or if you have a flower shop, like there should be things you're doing to nurture people that could be potential leads, and then eventually turn them into fans. So that is something that we actually can systematize and measure. So that's a big one. Yeah. We've seen that more and more and more. And if you think about what that involves, it's almost never the core competency of the business owner yeah. to do those things. Yeah. Well, not only that, you know, for at least 20 years and telling my clients, I said, you know, when you're looking at your customers and clients, the problem is never the problem. The problem is they don't even know how to think about the problem. That's right. You know, I mean, if they could even think about the problem, they'd be halfway to a solution, but they don't even know how to wrap their mind around it. I just had a request at lunchtime. I was sitting in on a, one of the signature programs, and the guy said, you know, I have a real, real need to actually create an entire coaching program for doctors. And he says, and so I want to know everything about all the platforms that I need and everything. And he says, I wonder if you can help me. And I said, have you heard about the impact filter? He's early in the process. And he says, yeah, we just took that. And I said, you can't even talk to me unless you send me an impact filter. But if you send me an impact filter, three minutes after I read it, I'll know how to respond to you. I had Aerie in my vest pocket, but I wasn't <laughs> going to send send him to you until he's toilet trained. Yes, that's you know, right. He's coming in with muddy feet. He's still having a tail, you know, he just came out of the ocean. He doesn't even have back feet yet. So so anyway, this is really fascinating. So as you can tell, I'm really pitching you on this podcast because I'm so happy with all the reports that we've gotten. We've been testing for about a year now, and we've had dozens and dozens of successful projects. We're going to actually video all the people who successfully complete this special project and you'll have that available as one of your marketing materials. But we're going to use it Thank you. you know, with all of our coaches and our program advisors to say, here's stop trying to do the how, stop trying to make your team who do not have the abilities do the how, go to the source, go to OAO, less doing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you for your support. Okay. Real pleasure, and I think at the end of Casablanca, there's this wonderful scene where Humphrey Bogart and I think it's Claude Rains are walking off, and he says, I think this is going to be the start of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Ari. Thank you so much for listening. As a reminder for Strategic Coach clients, if you want to get in touch with Ari about a project and how he can support your business, contact him at oao at lessdoing.com. Again, if you want to contact Ari about how he can help your business, contact him at oao at lessdoing.com. If you're not a Strategic Coach participant, you can also take advantage of this offer. Just visit Ari's website at go dot lessdoing.com. Again, go dot lessdoing.com. For a copy of our free ebook and a download of the impact filter, visit extraordinaryimpactfilter.coach or eif.coach. Again, to get a free copy of the ebook and the impact filter, visit extraordinaryimpactfilter.coach or eif.coach. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>